Hi, this is Anita from the Dusty Roads podcast or from a bus on a dusty road. As I've mentioned many times before, my mother is from Sweden. And I remember when we were young, especially, we would kind of tease her a bit with, you know, the way she'd speak English and how she'd sound a little bit like she was singing. ABBA just recently released a new album. And it was her first album in like some 40 years. And I'm a, I'm a great fan of ABBA. And I was listening to some of their music the other day. And I noticed like, you know, when they were singing, it would be like, they would say words like music. And you could just hear that little bit of that sing-songing in with some of the English as they were singing the songs. And don't get me wrong, ABBA's fantastic. And they have got fantastic voices. And that accent just makes for their songs even more. But here's a question that many people have been asking on the internet. So I wanted to try to answer it. And it's kind of a bit of an interesting sort of trivia question. Why does a Swedish language sound like singing? I know my poor mother, who lived in America, but came to America, she's about 19 years old, spent a good part of her life with people asking her like, oh, you have such a cute accent, where are you from? And she would always get very embarrassed and she'd blush and she'd be like, oh, well, I'm from Sweden. You know, we'd always kind of like, you know, tease her a little bit because that little bit of that sing songiness going on. So I wanted to know, why is the Swedish language this way? What makes people say that the Swedes will sing? Well, actually, the Swedish language has what's called a lot of prosody. And basically, that's the rhythm or it's the stress of the language. So this is the part of the language where you understand a person's words beyond just their speech, that you understand sort of like the meaning. It's about the attitude and how the language itself is spoken. And the reason why Sweden has a lot of this in there is because they'll stress words and accents. And it's how they stress the words and accents. You know, many parts of Sweden, too, will roll their R's. And I've also noticed, too, that in Sweden, a lot of people, be, before people emphasize something, they might go, yeah, yeah, yo vist, yeah. And they'll, they'll just breathe in just a little bit. Of course, I'm overemphasizing it now. And I apologize to any Swedes who might be out there um, who might say, what's she talking about? But really, I've always noticed that in some parts of Sweden, people will just sort of like to emphasize, like I'm going to emphasize something right now. They will say something. So the word stress in the Swedish language is the key to this all. In the Swedish language, you can have a long vowel followed by a short consonant, or you can have a short consonant followed by a long vowel. So the rule in Swedish, this is called the quantity rule. So the fact that these words sort of have this long and short vowels going on would, would automatically give it a little bit of the sing-song type of um, sing-song already. And this was a part that I really didn't realize, but it it makes total sense to me, too, is that the Swedish kind of has an accent where they might go up and then come partway down. And this is kind of similar to some of the Asian languages, you know, where they might say, you know, um, yag, you know, you know, they, they will kind of go up a little bit, you know. And where the Chinese and the Asian languages do that, but except in the Chinese and Asian languages, it's really like the accent really help does the meaning of the word. Where, where in the Swedish language, the accents, I, as I see it, is more used as sort of like um, for the stress of the word itself. So, you know, the Swedish language has, you know, basically two types of tones to it. They have like a, um, an acute tone and they have a grave tone. And if you'd like to find out more, I've written a, a blog about this, which sort of explains a little bit more of these types of tones. But here's sort of like the interesting part of this all, that when someone speaks Swedish, they will stress the important word. So all the other words can kind of use the accent, but the most important word is the word that will be stressed. So when you speak Swedish, and I speak some Swedish, but I am not that proficient in it, but I I know that the Swedes do this, that the most important words that they will give the monotone to, and, and the most important word, they will stress. Like they could say, you know, hey league till traffest day or hey league, hey league 
till Tarafa's day. You like one of them is like, you know, I'm happy to see you. I'm, you know, happy, stressed, you know, I'm stressed or, you know, it's great to meet you. They can actually, they can change that a little bit. And this is where it kind of differs in the Asian languages that use tones too, is that, you know, in the Asian languages, if anyone has lived in an Asian country, they, especially Vietnam, that has five tones, you know how important the tones are here. And literally, you could be saying something and the Vietnamese will look at you with this blank stare like, uh, your tones are wrong. You know, so that is definitely a tonal language where the Swedes more, it's a language which is used to be able to stress to you the importance or an emphasis of something. So, you know, it's it's all of these points that, that I think, you know, as we come in from the outside and we, we look at a language and we, you know, think about a language like the Swedish language. And it's all of these different points that kind of, you know, the accent, the stressing of the words, the little bit of the up and downs with the, the these accents going on. You don't, they're not really tones they're more like an accent that's going on. And it's all of these that sort of make it up together you know, to give this little bit of this sort of like up and down and sing-songy feel to the language. And that's what kind of makes the Swedish language so much softer than, let's say, German or, or Danish, which is more like a guttural type of language. And that's why the Swedes have sort of like this lovely melody. And even if when you hear a Swede that's sort of speaking the English language, you'll kind of hear that they're almost kind of singing the English language, kind of like ABBA. Next time you listen to the original cast of ABBA singing their songs, you will be able to hear some of this coming in. You know, like the words like musique, uh, you'll be able to hear some of their words with a little bit of this, you know, sing-songiness coming in, which makes the music even more lovely than it would have been without it. I think this is one of the beauties of language, and it just shows again how cultural a language is. Having been someone who has spent a good part of my life in living in another part of the world other than my own country, language is always really an interesting thing because you can study the language, you can know the word, you can be able to, you know, maybe even read it fluently. You can feel like, hey, I know this language, but there's so much that's culturally with the language. And that's really what this is with, with Swedish, is that the Swedes just inherently understand which words they're going to stress, what they're not going to stress. They you know, inherently do that raising up and down. And we come in as as foreigners and or Americans, and we're not maybe quite used to that. You know, so we 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 maybe we can speak the language, but we're not going to be able to speak it the same way the Swedes do unless we work on these cultural things too. And believe me, there are some foreigners I've met that can speak excellent Swedish because they can understand this. They understand the tones and the other things that are going on. So no wonder many people in America or other places will say, why did the Swedes sing? Well, it's not really singing as much as their accent and their emphasis and the other things that they're putting onto the words themselves. But whatever it is, Swedish is a lovely language, and we are grateful and thankful for them that have given us this beautiful language. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you've enjoyed this podcast. And if you'd like to learn more, you can read our blog, A Bus on a Dusty Road. Do consider to subscribe to our Dusty Roads podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Love to have you be part of our community. Thank you so much for listening because without you, this would not be possible. Thank you.